Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Division video. And in today's video, I wanted to put together six tips to help you guys survive in survival. And the reason for that is because in my streams, in my videos, I've been getting a lot of questions with regards to, you know, what's the best way to play survival? How do you get your mask so quickly? Where do you find the best materials? How do you deal with the hunters? Does everyone need to get antivirals? Anything like that. All those questions I'm going to aim to answer in this video. So if you guys do enjoy this and you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. But to begin with, just before we dive into the points, it is worth noting that there are multiple ways you can play survival. You can play it slow and steady, win to the race, you can gear up at your own pace, you can work your way into the dark zone very gradually, and then make it so that when you get to the final point, the final encounter, you are very well geared. Alternatively, you can play it like myself and 269 do, we are very much more high risk, high reward. We play survival quickly, with the intention of getting into the dark zone first or as quickly as possible, and it then means that a lot of our encounters late game tend to be with lower quality gear. And while that is a risk, what it also allows you to do is separate yourself from the pack and give yourself a lot more breathing space so you don't have to worry about dealing with players and also NPCs. It is worth noting we always do all of our survival stuff in PvP, so this does work in PvP servers. And all of these tips also work solo and as a group. It goes without saying that in a group it's easier because someone has your back, but this is still definitely possible solo. So to begin with, let's start at point number six. Get closer to the dark zone before you begin scavenging. Now this is again, very much high risk, high reward. See, the way that this game mode works is that when you spawn into the map, you spawn on the outskirts. Anything you loot on the outskirts of the map will typically be of green rarity with the very slim chance that you'll encounter a blue. However, the closer you get to the dark zone, the better the item quality becomes and the easier it becomes to find those items you're after. So in order to get into the dark zone, you of course need to craft a mask, and that requires two blue fabric and two blue tools, or six green fabric and six green tools if you're gonna convert those into blues. Now, if you spend your time on the outskirts of the map, it'll take you quite a while to get those materials needed to craft the mask. However, if you work yourself closer to the dark zone, the kind of areas are also depicted by the sort of barriers that you'll pass through. Once you get into the closer sort of inner ring, Anytime you loot stuff, it will invariably be either blue and green, or sometimes just blue altogether. You'll get to the point where some toolboxes will give you two or three blues, as opposed to, say, two or three greens, which is infinitely faster because if you can open one toolbox and you've already got the tools you need, and open one fabric box and you've already got the fabrics you need, then it's going to be very quick to go from point A to point B and get in the dark zone. However, what this does then require you do is bypass a lot of stuff at the very beginning of the game. This does put you in danger because of course you're running out in the cold when you don't have cold proof gear. You're of course also getting closer to stronger enemies the closer you are to the dark zone. But do remember that you can use the storm to hide from a lot of enemies. Their visibility cone in survival is much shorter because of the storm. So if you encounter say purple or gold enemies, definitely pass them by. Because when you're running the strategy, it does of course mean that a lot of the time you'll be in green gear with a pistol, maybe a weapon if you've been lucky. So you are definitely gonna need to pick your battles, but it is definitely possible to work your way past a lot of enemies, get very close to the dark zone, loot your items, and then get in extremely quickly. We are normally, on average, in the dark zone, probably about 10-15 minutes into a survival match, so it's very very quick this way, provided you can stay alive. That then moves me nicely on to the second point, point number five, notable locations. Now again, one of the things about this game mode is map knowledge, and while there are a multitude of locations you can use to gather items, Things worth noting are as follows. Items like tools are typically found, say, at car parks or construction sites. Items like fabric can very easily be found in clothes stores. So when you're walking around and you're getting closer to the dark zone, pay attention for the types of stores you're passing because they will typically have the items you need. If you find a clothes store that is very close to the dark zone, one simple cardboard box will typically be what you need. And again, while these are by no means the only locations, a few of the ones that we use are as follows. There is a collection of buildings very near the Chelsea area that are interconnected and have a decent amount of items. These are, however, borderline outskirts, so you're not necessarily going to get the greatest materials here. But as you work further in, to the north of the Garment District, there are a lot of clothes stores there, so there are lots of fabric boxes, great for getting your blue fabrics, and that is also very, very close to the Dark Zone. And on the east side of the map, just northwest of Kipps Bay, there is also a collection of buildings once again interconnected. The buildings that have multiple floors are great because they typically house lots of loot boxes, lots of different types of loot, and of course if you can then cycle between a few of them, A you're outside the cold, and B you can normally find by the time you run through these houses you've got everything you need, especially if you're running solo you don't have to share your loot, then it's very easy to gear up in say one maybe two locations. You can of course see those recommended locations that we use on the map on screen, but as mentioned there are no doubt many more locations you can use, 
but those are the sort of things you want to look out for. Also try and get into the habit of recognizing the types of boxes. Cardboard boxes have fabric, the black and silver metal crates have electronics, toolboxes obviously carry tools, and the rest is self-explanatory. Moving on to number four, use your consumables. This one is a pretty obvious tip, given that you want to try and, you know, keep your virus at bay. However, one of the more important things above all else is actually your hunger and your thirst. Hunger is of course tied to health regeneration, so if you don't have med packs and you don't have a heal skill early on, then having energy bars and canned food means that you can regenerate your health out of combat. So that's going to be very, very useful if you are, say, suffering from the cold, if you just come out of a battle and you need a means to heal, then eating canned food and energy bars will definitely help you out. And as for thirst, this is quite possibly the most important one during the scavenging phase. If you've had a drink and you've got the buff on your screen, then you can actually see lootable objects through walls. So if you're looking for things like toolboxes, fabric boxes, electronics boxes, anything like that, then you can see the kind of orange squares through walls, which means, of course, you then know instantly that there's something there to loot. So definitely keep these topped up. But of course, on top of that, make sure you keep your virus at bay. Then moving on to number three, craft an advanced virus filter. I didn't used to do this up until recently. I would just craft the bare minimum and then dive in the dark zone. However, Advanced virus filters allow you to enter contaminated areas inside of the dark zone, and these are very, very useful. While sometimes they do house bosses, and sometimes, you know, if you're playing on your own, you might want to think twice about engaging them, what they also play host to are division tech boxes. And while everyone will encounter at least one piece of division tech when they collect their antivirals, if you can get large quantities of division tech, it then means that you can convert those into any high-end material you like. So if you're in the crafting bench and you want to make a weapon, you can turn it into weapon parts. You want to make some gear, you can turn it into fabric. And of course, also a lot of those Dark Zone items need D-Tech anyway. So those kind of long black boxes, they are where you'll find your division tech. And they are normally located in contaminated areas. So if you don't have an advanced virus filter, then you're going to die trying to go inside there. Also, additional tip, especially if you're playing solo, if you have one of these and say you're being chased down by players, running into a contaminated area is not only a good way to kind of shortcut your way through the map, but also if they don't have those filters and they run in, they're either going to die or they're then going to run in and realize they can't follow you and you're then going to be able to escape. Next up, number two, not everybody needs antivirals. So this is a question I've had quite a bit. If you're playing as a team, the antivirals marked on the map, you have one per player. You only technically speaking need one because one of them gives you division tech and that is then used to craft your flare gun and then provided one person in your team calls in a helicopter, everyone can use it. It is still of value to try and go and get them because for every single objective you complete in a survival match, you get more points at the end and more points leads to more rewards and in turn, more loot. So if you are capable and your antivirals are in decent places, it is worth, you know, getting them all for everyone on your team and crafting all the flare guns. But it's also important to realize that sometimes they are in rather tricky situations or kind of places where maybe they're guarded by gold tier bosses and you just really don't want to fight them. So sometimes it is actually better off to leave them. It's also worth noting that if one person on your team collects the antivirals, which is actually just division tech, provided everyone else in your team is in proximity, they can also get division tech from this box, which means even if you don't get your antivirals, you're also able to craft your flare gun without them, which is really important because the flare gun is also an objective in survival. So even if you skip your antivirals, but craft the flare gun, you're still going to get more points. And if you don't want to do that, then you can again use that D tech to craft something else. And then finally in at number one, tips for the hunters. So a lot of people have been asking how you go about defeating the hunters because they are quite tricky, especially if you're playing solo. Now there are of course a variety of different ways to do things like this. One thing worth noting is that you can just call your extraction in and run away and leave your hunter there. This is also a great tip to do if you know that players are closing in on your location. Maybe they are trying to, you know, hijack your extraction. Maybe they're trying to kill you. If you call an extraction, then the second you call it in, a hunter will appear for every person in your group. So if you have a group of four, there will be four hunters. If you're running solo, there will be one. So if there was someone at your extraction trying to, you know, take you out, then you could always call it in let your hunter deal with them and then run away. Because the important thing to realize is that the hunter, once it's been killed, will not spawn again. So what you can do is take your hunter out or have someone else take your hunter out for you, go to a completely different extraction point, And when you call the helicopter in again, they won't respawn, which is useful. Not entirely sure whether that's intentional, but that is a strategy you can do if you're running solo. However, when you do want to fight them, one of the best extraction points to go to is actually DZ02. And the reason for that is if you go to the top of the car park, you call your extraction in and you then run down the ramp, go right and go to the staircase. This is a very good place to engage hunters. It is a bit risky because of course, in a confined space like that, if they throw in explosives or they hack something like a seeker mine and it comes back to you, then the tight and closed space does mean that there's a good chance they will mess you up. 
But the nice thing about this is that if you have something like Pulse or you can just sort of see them coming in, then when they come through the doorway, you're in a very good position to throw a grenade, stun them and burst them down. See, the good thing about Hunters is they don't have shields. They only have regular health, so they're much more akin to players. So they can die quite quickly, provided you can burst them down. So the nice thing about fighting in this staircase, if you're fighting as a group, it of course means that you can, you know, separate yourselves, crawl down the stairs if someone gets down and then get yourself up or get them up. But it also means, as mentioned, that because you're in a confined space, it is very easy to stun or trip or shock a hunter, which then gives you the necessary time to burn them down. I would recommend if you are playing solo to try and craft a high-end weapon. If you're playing as a team, you can get away with, say, blue, maybe purple weapons. If you are playing solo, high-end weapons do a lot of damage. The G36 is a very good weapon to get. It is a monster in survival, and it's also just a kind of an easy way to take down hunters. So if you have that and you're running solo, then in this corridor, if you get them pinned down, then you can burn through them really quickly. Again, there are of course many other extraction points, you can kind of go to those ones if you please, but I personally don't like Bryant Park. It is very open, there are too many boxes, too many cover points, very easy for people to flank you, especially other players. The one at DZ05 in the middle of the road is not too bad, but because it's at a crossroad, there are again many different angles people can come from, and of course the further north you go, the one in DZ06 has gold tier enemies, so again, they're a little bit tricky. So DZ02 is by far one of the easiest ways to take out your hunter, especially if you're playing solo. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Those were six tips that will hopefully help you guys survive in survival. Again, if you have any questions, drop them down below. And also remember that this is not by any means the only way to play the game. As mentioned, you can play it slowly, you can play it steadily, you can gear up at your own pace, however you like. But this is the way that we do it. This is the way that I have seen most success personally. So that is what I thought I'd share. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.